here we are. We're at the SOS show. It's in the middle of February and it's uh, 80 degrees here, so we've certainly got some uh, some good weather here, 2017. And we're going to take you through a brief show of the tour. And as I like to do, I like to start out at my own table. Me and Trump, you know, we have a big ego. So let's take a look. If you look in this uh, showcase here, uh, we have some really um, wonderful things. Uh, uh, going down from the left side, we uh, uh, we have a Sea Customs, second from the right, a very rare dagger, and Naval Assault, a very rare dagger next to it, uh, an SA Christmas dagger next to that, uh, and one of the rarest and best looking bayonets I've ever seen. Uh, it's attributed to the Navy, it has an anchor etched on it, uh, and it also has blue panels on both sides, absolutely remarkable. I'm keeping it for myself though, so don't call me about it. And then we have a couple of um, nice SS pieces, a full room and a Himmler dagger, uh, and some beautiful naval pieces. And while we're at it, we thought we would blend in some um, Adolf Hitler formal pattern silverware. And in the center is one of the rarest pieces of all the table service, and that's an asparagus server. You can tell by the ribs that are in it. We've already sold it, but we're just kind of keeping it here for decoration. And then moving along, lots of other fine essays, this is chained NSKKs, beautiful navies, a terrific Hitler Youth Leader with a couple of real nice Hitler Youth knives. Some good SS things. Some nice railway pieces. Some unusual hunting things. We got it here. We also have some superb etch bayonets. Luftwaffe forestry. Some diplomats and government officials. A little RAD section. We also have a real super SS NCO sword with an original etched SS motto on the blade and it's got the great knot on it. Then we're moving along and down here at the end, some really uh, wonderful uh, hunting and forestry things. These are the kind of things you'll look for years to find, and to get them in this condition is really, really terrific. So there we go. Well, here we are. We've uh, come to the uh, back of the hall here at the SOS, and we wanted you collectors to know that uh, you can also get some outstanding firearms here, too. We're looking at the display owned by Thomas Etowski, and this is Mr. Etowski right here with the Reese's Peanut Hat on. You've got a nice looking uh, grouping of Lugers here. Thank you very much. How long have you been in this business? Yeah, about 40 years. That's all? 40 years? 40, that's all. I'm a young man. Pretty soon you'll know what you're doing, right? Uh, I'm about to learn. <laughs> Did I pick one of these up? Which one? This one? Thank you. 
Look at this, what a magnificent gun, collectors. I think you call this an artillery Luger. It's got the long barrel, and the artillery Lugers also have an adjustable sight. And they also could have been fitted with a stock. Just a beautiful thing. They're, they're a work of art, in my opinion, anyhow. Let's see what a gun like this is worth. Not bad, uh, $3,800. And look at the condition of it, it's fabulous. Krieghoff presentation gun. It's a P code. It's uh, it's platinum coated, and this one's eighty-seven thousand. Well, uh, who would have owned that, or was it just a rich well, guy? Well, no, that, uh, it would have been a presentation to somebody in uh, in um, September of nineteen forty-one. Some mm -hmm. high German official. <coughs> uh, Could I just hold this? Sure, go ahead. Of course, if you drop I, it in chairs. I understand. Yeah, here's the, the maker Heydrich Krieghoff Waffenfabrik and the dimensions of the gun, silver and Sewell. Sewell was where they made all the good stuff, didn't well, they? Well, that's where the Krieghoff the yeah. factory was. I assume that these grips are ivory. Yep. This is wonderful, too. Look at, look at the um, markings there. Well, collectors, if you got a jingle in your pocket that you don't know what to do with, this would be a tremendous investment for the future. It's expensive at seventy-eight thousand, but hey, in twenty years it'll be worth a hundred and a quarter, maybe. Probably more. Probably more. But what a beautiful thing! I could sit up all night and just lust over this gun. It's so pretty. How long have you had it? Uh, probably about ten years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for showing it to us. Right. No, don't drop it or you own it. No, I own it. <laughs> well, as is our custom all the time, we always uh, try to visit my friend Walter Kanzler because he has some interesting things. Hi, Tom. There's Walter. How are you, sir? Good, buddy. How are you? Nice to see you. Have some interesting items as usual. Always something different. Yeah. And fresh, fresh toilet. Oh yeah, the fresh toilet paper, right out of a box, original, Wehrmacht toilet paper. We're coming down here, and uh, what caught my eye, as well as a lot of other people's eye. Uh, is a fantastic um, hunting piece here. Can, can we look at that, Walter? Yep. Yeah, what we have here is very unusual. This helps. This is the man that the piece belonged to, Herman Goering. And what we have as a grip on this piece uh, is an actual falcon, falcon claw. And as you know, Goering was interested in falconry. falconry yeah. uh, it was also a very expensive hobby at the time. Uh, oh. It was only for, for the aristocrats. Only for the aristocrats. And for people that um, know a little bit of German history, uh, Hermann Goering was with the Beer Hall Putsch in 1923, and he was shot in the groin uh, by the police, almost killed. Uh, and at the same time, the police were also looking for him because they wanted to arrest Goering also. But he managed to get out of Germany and went into the, into the Tyrol area in Austria where he recovered with his first wife, Karen. Karen. So what we have here is, <laughs> we look at these beautiful silver fittings, which are all hallmarked. Uh, we have the, <coughs> excuse me, the crest of 
the coat of arms of Herman Garin, a, a chain mailed arm with a ring. Uh, and below the, the crest uh, is some oak leaf decoration, and you'll see there's runic symbols here. Now, what does this say, Walter? Well, in other words, uh, hunter. Hail to the hunter. Hail to the hunter. That's Wild Man High. Walter has a cold. And then, then beneath it, it says Tyrol. Um, 1923. And it's dated 1923. I would think that um, the putsch was in November, so this could have very well been like a Christmas present, yeah. probably from Karen. Uh, and then on the it reverse. The, the last mention of it was that she gave it to him when he got out of the hospital and went on his first I see. I see. That, that makes sense. On the reverse is a, is a beautiful engraved. Uh, we'll get to them. Engraved falcon and the silver hallmarks. And uh, this gadget here must have been some type of retaining device, but the top part is yeah, going to time. The knife fit in the hunting pants. They had to always do uh -huh, the uh -huh. side of the later ones. Oh, I see. So that connected. That's, that's why there's no attachment. It fit right into the thing. Oh, I see. It would so go that, in. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Hang on. yeah. And what is this, like an amethyst or something? Yeah, I guess. Uh, it's interesting. It's not a sapphire. So. No. It's interesting, too, that I don't know whether you noticed this, but there's a little amethyst in the bottom of the sky. No, I never even noticed that. Wow. I did not see that. See that? Is that neat? Yeah, look at that. I did not see that, Tom. I did. Yes, <laughs> of course. And then another interesting thing is to show you how well made this is. You know, we normally see the uh, seam with leather scabbards, but the jeweler very cleverly made little tunnels in the silver mounts so that it would go right over the leather seams and there's no chance of it breaking apart there. And of course, it's also hallmarked. And then the blade, I mean, it was Hermann Goering, so you must have a beautiful damask blade. It's a combination of a sort of maiden hair with a little bit of uh, large roses, but still in mint condition. So you never know, in, in this day and age, you would think that everything has uh, surfaced, right, Walter? Well, but yet, uh, here we are. Supposedly 30 years ago, it was sold in Herman's, Herman Historica's work. Herman Historica, yeah. And then it disappeared. Yeah. And it came out in a uh, antique store in New York City. Oh, is that so? And the guy that bought it, bought it because he liked the cloth. Who wouldn't? If nothing else, but it's he a pretty know. good back scratcher. Yeah, he didn't know that it was Herman. And I ran into him at the Vegas gun show. And Perfect said, oh, timing. Yeah, he said, oh, you like this stuff, so yeah. that's where I got it. Well, that's an incredible piece. Thanks yeah. for sharing it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we appreciate it. Now, we stopped over here at, uh, you probably know the man's name, Dr. John Murley, and his dad over there, the old man. And, uh, you know John for years, I think, from the forums and his name's in a lot of books and uh, he's got some crazy business he does delivering babies every day and that's how he uh, forces us. Uh, somebody's got to do it. We're just looking at a couple things here that John has and this is stuff that you'll very, very rarely see. Here's an unissued Icorn bayonet with the original storage sh uh, sack as well as the um, issue tag. And notice the paper is still in the icorn tag. It's hard to find them with the paper in there, Absolutely. aren't they, John? About three to one, they'll have them. That's a wonderful uh, presentation there. And what do you got here? Just some other extras. A collector was selling his tag collection. Wow. I had a really rare August uh, Merton, but someone bought that one. That is a rare one. Green tag, yeah. I know these Icorn issue tags with the paper. I think I sold one for seven or eight hundred dollars. It's just crazy what they'll bring. More so than that now. I've more seen than that, Johnson are they? Thirteen ninety-five. No kidding. Oh, damn! I should have sold mine. I left money on the table again. See, that's why I'm not a good businessman. I always want to see everybody get a good deal, <laughs> but not me. Absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Thank you so much for sharing that stuff, John. Appreciate it. And if anybody's having a baby, here's the guy to say. <laughs> He'll take cash. That's true. <laughs> now we're uh, walking around the uh, SLS show here. We 
come across a fantastic display. It belongs to Gerhard Winbiel. If you just look at some of the stuff here, it's really, uh, really wild. I mean, here's a wooden plaque of the Fuhr, a terrific uh, wooden eagle. Some really uh, wonderful uh, headgear. Fabulous uniforms. I mean, look at these. Look at these sleeve eagles and all. Just beautiful SS things. Really nice tunics. Look at that. Isn't that terrific? Here's a uh, a Panzer wrap. Just a great, great display of things here. I'm not sure of what kind of a, a general this is, but uh, customs. Custom. Oh, sorry, it's a customs. Thank you. <laughs> Here's something a little different. Uh, a leather, kind of a Panzer wrap, also. First time I've ever seen anything like that. It even has a sleeve eagle on it. Pretty interesting, eh? Huh? Further along, uh, a wonderful, wonderful painting of the Kaiser in all his glory. No, it's not the Kaiser. No. No. Gerhard says it's not the Kaiser. It, at first, I saw the same thing, but. Uh, that, that it's the Kaiser's mustache? Yes, the, everybody had a Kaiser's mustache. Now we're finding out something here that, uh, ah, I see. Moritz Ferdinand Fire von Bissen. Oh boy, he sure is a dead ringer no, for the Kaiser. Uh, he was the, uh, the Imperial Governor of Belgium. Aha, wow. Yeah, and that, uh, yeah. you know, from the Schulenberg and all those people. Uh, Boy, is that great to have all that information oh, on the back. I mean, what a wonderful favor that is for history. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, otherwise... Uh, oh, yeah. What is that, about 1895, would you say, somewhere? Yeah. About 1895? About, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's really wonderful. Yeah, probably doing a Kaiser Parade. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like the kind of stuff they would have worn when he went over to... Uh, England for the grand anniversary in 1898 or something. Possibly, yes. yeah. Yes. That's a good drinking horn. You can get enough schnapps in there for even Robbie and me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. What is that ashtray with the uh, boar's tusk? Oh, it's it was a for cigars. For cigars, uh, for cigars yeah. And, uh, for the. Yeah. For Ehrman. And the whole yeah. thing is large, you know, yeah. for cigars. And, uh, oh, I really love that. Yeah. And that is a cutter. Oh, wow. That was given uh, to him by Amy. Let me see that, too. Wow. Can you pick that up there, the coat of arms? See, you too could cut your cigar with Herman Goering's yeah, clipper. Yeah, two different a sizes. A big one or a little one? Yeah. It's something you don't this, see. This, this looks like a, uh, I mean, an elephant tusk. Yeah. It's not a, a boar. No. Beautiful. Really beautiful, Gerhard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for showing us this yeah. stuff. Uh, now you have to wear that. Uh... I have to wear this? <laughs> <laughs> it's listed in uh, under a Nazi kit, uh, a book that came out a uh, long time ago. Oh, I never saw that before. Yeah. What is a Nazi kitsch? Yeah, just uh, all those uh, uh, things that... It has the, uh, the Hockenkreuz in the tie. Everybody has to have one of them for uh, church on Sunday. Huh. That's, you know, that's... Yeah. Uh, I never saw anything like that before. No? No. What did you wear then in all the, you know, that is Nazi kitsch and all that type of stuff. Yeah, cool. And there was a whole book uh, on it, uh, printed in Germany in this 
the early 80s and uh, yeah. confiscated uh, all the copies, that's why you don't see it around, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but oh, cool stuff. Thanks, Gerhard. Yeah, well, here we're still at Gerhardt's, and um, we've come across an officer guard de cour lobster tail in really fantastic condition. You can tell the officer easily by uh, it has like a three leaf clover uh, cockade on both sides of it. Uh, whereas the enlisted man, it's just round, I believe, Gerhardt. Yep. Yeah. And then in the center is the, uh, the Order of the Black Eagle with the Sum Queek, the. Uh, the slogan, how do you pronounce that? Yeah, some, some week, week, that's yeah. right, yeah. Boy, I'm getting good. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and, a, and a beautiful silver eagle and the open crown. On the officers, I think the crown is usually a brass color and maybe yeah. different than, yeah, than the, the uh, yeah. Usually it's, uh, yeah, gold, uh, yeah. gilded, yeah. And, and then finer the, usually, yeah. And a nice silk lining with beautiful, uh, a sweatband in leather and the, the, the felt green. Keep the man a little bit cool in this in the hot summer sun. Boy, they must have sweat to death wearing these in the summer. Oh. Uh, you know, doing your parade. Uh, oh, it must have been. Uh, you wear it for hours and hours, you know, uh, the whole day. People were dropping off from the exhaustion. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Well, at the SOS, we have old collectors, middle-aged people, and then we run into some young people like Chandler here. How old are you, Chandler? 17, sir. 17, there we go. See that? It's not too early to start. And it looks like you made a purchase for your collection. Yes, sir. What is that? It's an Italian motorcycles helmet. Still got the emblem on it. And it cost me about $125. Wow, could I see it? Sure thing. And this is vintage when? World War II? Or? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow, it's in good condition. Look at this, collectors. All the, the liners intact, the chin strap, the buckles there. I think you got a bargain. I think I did, too. Yeah. It looks like the Eagles maybe got a prong broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are you from, Chandler? I'm from Dublin, Ohio. Dublin, Ohio. That's not too far, I guess. Yeah, that's about a four-hour drive. Oh, that's pretty far. Then. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing this with us, and uh, we appreciate you coming into the collecting field. And uh, all I can say is, if you start this early, you're hooked for life. <laughs> so I feel sorry for you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Good luck at the show. Okay. We're standing here. And we're we're talking to Michael, and uh, Michael has uh, discovered a very interesting thing here. Uh, it's a napkin, and what's on the napkin, Michael? Well, on the napkin you have eight of the original 21 Nuremberg Trials defendant signatures. Um, here in handkerchief you have Albert Speer, Rosenberg, Sesequant, Ribbentrop, Herman Goring, Julius Stryker, Donuts, and then Jodel. A few yodel. Of, yodel. I always say yeah. it wrong. Everyone tells yeah, yodel. me. So yodel. He's dated. Now, I found this in a thrift store inside of a sewing box. In this what envelope was in the sealed. sewing box? The napkin was in the sewing it box? It was inside this envelope sealed in the sewing box. There was a bunch of 1950s era sewing stuff in there. It was a 50s wow. sewing box. What this is, collectors, the uh, the prisoners at Nuremberg, of course, they, uh, they were guarded at the time, and many of the American guards were able to get signatures from the individual prisoners. You know, they were looking for any kind of good treatment they could get, so a signature was easy. So we see, we see signatures once in a while, but this is the first time I've ever uh, seen it on a napkin like this. Um, it's a very interesting thing. What was your name again? Michael. The Michael. Well, we, we thank you for sharing this, and uh, I'm sure other collectors will enjoy seeing it. Awesome. Okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Another nice piece that we're featuring at the show, uh, it's an extremely rare uh, Shaco. Uh, comes from the 1902 period in the Colonial Marine Infantry. Germany had colonies in China, and this comes from Cheng Tao. You can see the Imperial uh, Colonial Eagle on the uh, faceplate, and it's got a great liner in it, and the um, undersurface of the, of the back rim uh, has the initials BAO, uh, which translate um, 
uh, to that uh, China group, and this was all during the um, Boxer Rebellion. So you can imagine how rare uh, a shako like this is, and it's in terrific condition considering its age. See, this is how it works, collectors. You have to do a little negotiation in order to get what, the, what you want price-wise. But usually most dealers are willing to negotiate, especially the last day of the show.